Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a new build. It's a 2020 Acura RDX A-Spec all-wheel drive. I like the last one so much, I bought another one. Uh, they totaled this one because somebody put some nameplates where they don't belong and they're just so ugly that they didn't want it on the road. Actually, they totaled this one because it hit a pole. Caught it right up here in the corner and just brought it back. So we have some suspension damage, fender, hood, bumper, headlight, door, and maybe a little pillar damage. I can't see there's some stuff in the way. And uh, we're also missing our emblem. So maybe they were just trying to scrape the emblem off and took a little bit too much off. Now we got some airbags that deployed, some seat belts. They say it runs, haven't tried. Uh, didn't even charge it up, the battery's dead. It, was, uh, it wasn't quite this dirty when I picked it up, it was dirty, but uh, I took the scenic route home from Indianapolis. And when I say scenic route, there was about 20 miles of gravel roads, so it was very scenic. So let's get it down to the shop and we're probably gonna do some work to get it off the trailer, see if it runs and let's get into it. First, we're gonna remove what's left of our fender. I wanna get it out of the way before I work on the car so that I don't damage it. I'm pretty sure we could buff that little scratch out of there. There's one bolt at the bottom, there's one back on the hinge and there's one inside the door. There's supposed to be a few more, but well, they got taken out. We're going to pop the push pin out of our little foam filler here. There's supposed to be one at the bottom, but it didn't survive. It's just wedged underneath the bracket for the bottom of the fender. And that's supposed to be at the edge of the door. Pull our wheel off of here, or what's left of it. We got a key for our wheel locks. Amazing. And the car originally had two fobs, but some sticky fingers at the auction walked away with one of them. This is that new two-piece design wheel. We're not gonna throw it out just yet. We might need it for our core, and it still has a tire sensor and a cap on it. And we'll pull our wheel liner out of here. It's kind of in our way. A couple bolts on the bottom and a couple little push pins. And one Phillips screw. There's supposed to be a few more, but they forgot those at the accident scene. We're down a few push pins on that wheel liner. We got some headlight parts. I want to save that one because that's the bolt for the bracket for the bumper. And it's more headlight parts. We'll pull our drive axle nut off of here. And pull our suspension over. It ripped the ball joint out, so I'm just gonna try to get the drive axle out so we can see everything in there. See what we're gonna need. The control arm looks like a pretzel. We're definitely gonna need that. I don't have enough hands, so I'm just gonna lean on the pry bar. That'll hold the control arm down so that I can get this drive axle out. Give me two free hands. I might also need this drive axle for a core, depending on where I get a new one from. In the pile, now that that axle is out of the way, we can see everything we're gonna need. And we're going to go ahead and order it, so I'll be back in a few minutes with all of the parts. We can throw them on. Ah, the magic of video. we got to finish taking it apart so we can put our new parts on. Pull the ABS wire out of here. That was actually not damaged. One bolt our caliper. We already took the other bolt out of the brake hose. Caliper in a little bit, and then we'll hang it up here. I will use our Kung Fu grip to straighten out the cotter pin because I am way too lazy to walk across the shop and get a pair of side cutters. And then we can unbolt the tie rod in. Put the taps with the hammer, knock it out of there. Both the inner and outer tie rod are bent, but they'll be good enough for right now. I'll change them later when it's on the lift and easier to work on. We'll pop these little caps off of our cowl screen. That gives us access to the nuts on the top of the strut. We can unbolt our strut assembly. We'll just leave the knuckle on it. We don't need to take it apart. 
Now we're going to jack it up a little bit so I can fit underneath this thing. We had it sitting on a big block of wood. When I transport it, I don't like them leaning, so I put those under there to keep it somewhat level when I tie it down. Look at Mr. Safety here. I'm even going to use a jack stand. I hope it's not from Harbor Freight. We can unbolt our lower control arm. I bolt like to in there. Pull our control arm down a little bit so we can get to the bolt in the front. And our sway bar is in the way, so we're going to pry it up a little bit so we can get the wrench in there. And then we'll loosen that bolt one eighth of a turn at a time. Not a whole lot of room in there. And I am wearing gloves because this thing is covered in drive axle grease. And I cannot stand drive axle grease. It is right up there with gear lube. We got the bolt out of the subframe. Now we need to pull it out of the bushing. And we don't quite have enough room. It's hitting our sway bar. So we're going to give up and figure something else out. We're going to disconnect the sway bar on the driver's side. That'll allow us to move the sway bar up a little higher so that we can get in there and get that bolt out. Just put a pair of vice grips on the back of it. And then we're going to break it loose. And this is taking far too long. So we'll get the power tools. And flip our vice grips. And we can push it out of there. Put a little tension on it. And now we'll be able to move it up a little higher, hopefully enough that we can sneak that bolt out. Try that sway bar up, and we got our bolt out. Now we can get our lower control arm with our custom caster adjustment out. I win. Toss that in the pile. So our new parts have arrived. Uh, they are the road tested variety. So we got an entire drive axle assembly. We don't need the center section, so we're just going to separate it. Just tap the axle out of it. And the axle is ready to go in. But before we can put it in, we need to get the rest of our axle, our Bluetooth axle, out of here. And we'll climb underneath here. This will be a lot easier on the lift, but unfortunately we have to fix it to get it there. We'll try tapping it out with the chisel. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to work, but it doesn't hurt to try, I guess. Get the chisel centered on the back of it. And then we'll just tap it out with the hammer. Awkwardly. Very awkwardly. Only takes a little bit to get it off that snap ring once it starts moving. Climb back out of here and slide this ewy gooey axle off of here. And there's still some axle parts inside bearings and whatnot. Now we have our new to our car control arm we can put in here. It's a little bit differently shaped than our original one, but I think it might work. The used parts were actually about a third of the price of piecing this all together new. And when you get used parts, you don't have to press in the bearings. It already comes with them. So that's nice. So I'm fighting with our famous front bolt. I got the pry bar sitting on my knee. That's holding the sway bar up so we can get our bolt in there and try to tighten it up. It goes through one ear of the subframe and then the other ear of the subframe has the nut welded to the back side of it. So you got to get it in there straight. Once you get it started, it's pretty easy. Just a, about a million eighth turns until it's tight. Start our bolts in the back. Then we'll tighten down those rear bolts to manufacturer specs. Poor electric ugga duggas. We're going to tighten up our bolt in the front. We're going to load the control arm, basically put it where it's going to be when the car's sitting on the ground. That way our bushing will be where it belongs. It won't be stressed and twisted. Little by little, we'll get it. Once the bolt is tight enough to pinch the metal part of the bushing in there, you can push down on the control arm a little bit and the rubber will just twist without moving that metal part. And then we'll tighten up our one last bolt that I had to go get the socket for. 
Now we can throw our suspension up in here. I left it all together. No need to take it apart. It's everything. The strut, the knuckle, the hub, the backing plate, even our ABS wire. The yard that I got it from is pretty good about taking stuff apart, so it actually had the lower control arm attached to it when I got it, but I took it apart just for ease of installation. To avoid losing these nuts to Narnia, we're going to use a magnetic socket to get them started. There's a magnet inside of it that just holds them in there. Unfortunately, it's not long enough to tighten them all the way up, but it is enough for us to get it started. Then we can run it down with our impact and our regular socket, and we won't lose them. And we can put our little caps on there, and none of our parts left us. We can remove what's left of our sway bar link. We're going to need the nuts off of this for our new one. We had to get that from Acura. It didn't come with our used suspension, and it didn't order it, just in case it did. And the nuts don't come with a brand new sway bar link from Acura. Put a little grease on the splines of our drive axle. There is a couple seals in there. We want to make sure we don't tear them up. And we'll even put some inside the hub because, well, the next guy might want to get this part without a struggle. And I might be the next guy. And the drive axle actually came from a different place than the uh, rest of our suspension. I go wherever the best prices are. And just because you have one part at a good price doesn't mean you have the next one. So it saved me about $100 going to two different yards for the different parts. Pry down on our lower control arm, slide our axle in there, and slide our ball joint in. This style ball joint comes apart in two different places. It bolts into the control arm or it just goes through the knuckle and has the nut on the top of it. I always take it apart on the control arm because for some reason it always seems easier to get those nuts or bolts or whatever they are back into the control arm than trying to get the control arm back into the knuckle when you separate it at the other end. Just my preference. So that's what we're doing. We got it started. I'm just tapping in and it'll slide up over those studs. Put our drive axle nut on here. And we can tighten up all of our nuts on the bottom of our ball joint. Tighten up our drive axle. And put our brake rotor on. Don't forget the little screws so it doesn't end up on our toes. Because we're not wearing our steel-toed flip-flops today. Drop our caliper on here. Bolt it in. We can unbolt our ABS wire. We have a spare for the next build. We'll put our original ABS wire back in so that I don't have to go find the other end of it. Because they probably put it in an inconvenient place. Start our bolts. And tighten them down. Put our brake hose in. And tighten that up. One way that helps me to not forget anything is to go through the job again, touch all the bolts that I took out, and basically do the job in my head so that I don't forget anything. I'll go ahead and put our tie rod back in here. Temporarily. We'll change it later when it's up in the lift, but it should drive with this. It's spinning, so we're just going to jam it up there with our pry bar, and then tighten it down. And we'll throw a cotter pin in there, just in case. Only has to go around the shop a couple times, but still don't want it to fall apart. Bend it over. Just so it doesn't fall out of there. Cotter pins are cheap. And we can go ahead and reconnect our sway bar on the other side. nut on there, clamp our vice grips on the back side, and spin it on there. And we have to tighten the rest of it by hand because, well, 
battery powered things have failed us again. Click. Up our rice grips off of here. Let Hercules put those on there. Now we're going to put our new wheel on here. This one holds air. Might not look the same. It does the job. Should get it off the trailer. Fun fact, this spare came from Scott's GM Emporium because this car doesn't actually have a spare tire. Our jack stand out of here. Safety first. And we'll let it down. We got a 2x4 on there because we're probably going to get the jack stuck if we don't set it down on a 2x4. Would you look at that? That jerk over at Scott's GM Emporium sold us a flat spare tire. Big surprise. And while I was working on the other stuff under the hood, I noticed that our battery wasn't actually dead. It was disconnected. So that's nice. Just reconnect it and see if it starts. And it does. So we'll pull the rest of our straps off and take this thing for its first test drive. A little bit different view than normal, but I don't want to go out in the rain. I'll melt. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of that airbag. It's bad enough I don't have a mirror. I can't drive without mirrors, but now I can't even see out the window. So we're just gonna cut it out of there. And okay class, what kind of razor blade do we use? That's right, the dullest one we can find. And for extra credit, where do we usually find them? That's right, on the shop floor. This is suspiciously sharp. In the pile. So I took a short trip to Atlanta because they had the best price on a wheel. And we got our OEM wheel. It even came with a brand new tire. Same brand and everything. Saved me a couple bucks. I got the tire for free. And I did have to give back what was left of our old wheel as a core. So that's why I saved it. Now I want to check and see what restraint components we need to replace and what we need to send out to my airbags for repair. Interesting. Not sure how we have no codes in here. Since we have two deployed airbags, a few deployed seatbelts. Guess we're gonna have to do it this way. Side curtain. Side curtain. Okay, we just want one or the other. There we go. Driver's seat belt tensioner deployed, okay? Passenger seatbelt tensioner deployed is not on. Side curtain airbag, pretty obvious. Side airbag, also obvious. That's it. So it looks like we're just going to need to replace our airbags and the pre-tensioner on the driver's seat. That's it. So in the interest of being efficient and lazy, our scanner is already hooked up. You might as well go ahead and force learn our TPMS sensor from our used wheel. We could take it for a ride and it would relearn everything, but I'm not driving it in this condition. And I want to know if our sensor needs to be swapped out before I go and toss it in the pile. Now the scanner says it failed, but apparently the task was failed successfully because it relearned our TPMS sensor. I can't bear looking at this nameplate any longer, so we're going to pull it off of our driver's door. I'm sure the dealer stuck these on there and called it some enhanced branding package and then charged the first owner 
$5,000 for it when it was new. Just slide the spatula back there, falls right off. Clean it up a little bit. And then we'll use our magic eraser to get rid of the rest of this glue. If you have some ugly nameplates on your car, you can pick up one of these magic erasers in my Amazon store and get rid of them. I guess it could be worse. It could be a pinstripe. But the magic eraser also gets rid of those. This is not the OEM two-sided tape, so it's a little gooey. It takes a little longer to get it off of there. A little more work in this corner, and the rest of that residue will come off with a little wax and grease remover. Now that method takes a little too long, so I have the new nameplate remover 5000. Much quicker. It also gets rid of the rest of the glue. But be careful, it will scuff the paint if you don't use it correctly. Now we're going to pull our door check out of here. We unbolted it from the pillar. And we're going to pull the nuts out of the door. And we're going to drop it down in the door. Maybe never to be seen again. Timber. We'll pull the boot off of our wiring harness. And we can see our little tabs. We can release them with a pick. Slowly work your way around and pull out on it just to keep the tabs from re-engaging. And now we can unplug all of our connectors on the backside as soon as I figure them out. That one was easy. So was that one. Now we can remove our door. It would be much easier to unbolt the door from the hinges, but due to the recent body work that the last owner did, we can't get right to those. So we're gonna pull the hinges off the pillar. These use those awesome 12 point sockets that most people just use to round the heads off of bolts that I have to then take off later. So now we just open the handle up and the door comes off and we can carry it away or let it fall on the floor and do your Victory Auto Wreckers commercial remake. Rest in peace, Victory Auto Wreckers. Now we're gonna pull our passenger seat out of here, pull the little caps off. We can see the bolts and that we broke the wrong socket. Get the right socket that wants to stay in the bolt. Now we'll put our seat forward. The airbag took that little piece off for us so that we can see our nut that holds our seat belt on. And the seat belt is still good. Go figure. And unbolt our rear seat bolt. And make sure our seat is disconnected. Pull our headrest out of there. And we'll put our seat back and center it over the track just so it's easier to store. And tip it back. Ooh, money. Build paying for itself. Now we can climb underneath here and Start unplugging all of our wiring harnesses. I'm sure there's more computers under this seat than NASA had for the first moon landing. I want to see what the bottom of a rocker looks like here. We got to pull the rest of the fender bracket out. One screw on the back. There's supposed to be a nut cert, but that pulled out of there. And now we can see just how bad it looks. That's all from the wheel going back into it. I've seen enough. Let's go do something easy. We'll go over to the other side and pull our seatbelt out, get it ready to go to my airbags. We'll unbolt it from the seat. Put the bolt back in there so we don't lose it. Pull up on the rear sill plate. And then we can get our B pillar trim off of here. Just a little wiggle and push it out from that front sill plate and toss it in the back. Now we can disconnect our plug. The little tabs you push in and then unbolt the retractor. Now 
and you can pull the upper trim off. This is a little wiggle and pull. And unbolt the top of it. And our seat belt's out and ready to go. Make sure our adjuster works. They do tend to break. And it's better to find out now than when we're putting it back together. And we're going to do a little body work. We're going to straighten out this little bracket for our fender. It's welded on. And I don't want to replace it, so we'll just straighten it. It also holds our headlight in. We're not going to get it perfect, because we need a fender to figure out exactly where it goes. We're going to hammer the rest of our fender forward so I can get to the bolt. And pull this piece of our fender off. And we might as well unbolt the rest of our headlight while we're here. The bottom of that bolt's a little torn up, so we're straightening out the threads as we remove it. And we're going to go ahead and straighten out this rear fender bracket, which is welded onto our hood hinge. I'm not completely sure why, because I'm probably going to end up getting a hood hinge due to the damage on the hood. They tend to bend pretty easily. So I think the only reason I'm actually straightening it is because I don't want to go work on the bottom of that pillar. So we'll spend a little time here. We'll hammer out the kink and straighten it up a little bit. That's good enough till I decide if I'm going to use it. All right, we've done all we can do. We're gonna to have to work on this. So we're gonna grind off some of our paint. And we're gonna weld this little tab on there. So that we can use Big Bertha to pull this out. Probably don't need Big Bertha. This stuff is Playdonium. And there's proof. It just rips right out. So we welded the tab back on at a different place. Let's see if we can get this out a little bit more over here. And we just Feel it open like a can opener. There's not much to that. So we'll put the slide hammer up inside there and see if we can tear some more holes in it. If you're wondering why I'm straightening this, even though I'm probably going to replace it, you can see the other pieces that I'm not going to replace that are adjacent to it are also moving with it. And that's what I'm concerned about. I want to get the rest of this in the right spot. If I just cut this off and I didn't pull any of it, our other our corners and everything else might not be in the right spot. So we'll pull it back about where it goes. We need to make it pretty. Now we're going to try some PDR. Just got a pry bar in there. We're prying it against the inner piece and pushing the outer piece out. For the same reason, we want to get everything that we're not going to be cutting off in the right spot. Better to do it now than find out it doesn't fit later. We got it as straight as we need to, so now we're gonna clean up some seam sealer so we can see our edge of our piece here, and we can see the spot weld. There is some glue on the back side of that, some structural binding adhesive, so there's not that many spot welds, but there are a few. So I know I'll be putting it in up to this edge, but the other edges, I don't know where I'm gonna put it in, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit longer than I need and get it out of our way. I just need to be able to see what's inside and see what's damaged because an outer skin is actually cheaper new than buying the entire A pillar from a junkyard. But if I need anything inside, it then changes the cost to make the junkyard A pillar cheaper. So we cut our top probably about where our last cut's gonna be. And this back piece, we're just cutting right along the edge. We're definitely not putting it in there. A couple of spot welds on the very bottom at the pinch weld. And we'll use our scraper to knock them loose. We could heat up that structural adhesive, but just hammer the scraper through it. And we'll pry it off of there. Always that one little spot weld. And we'll try twisting it out of there and see if we can break it loose. And it's not working, so we're going to give up and just use the scraper like we should have in the pile. And now we can see what's inside. And our little hinge mount there has got a little damage on it. That is high strength steel, so we can't straighten it. We're going to have to replace it, but luckily it's only about nine welds to get it out of there. So it just made my decision of if I'm buying an outer skin from the dealer or if I'm buying a used piece from the salvage yard. 
USB from the salvage yard it is. Now we need to get our airbag module out of here so we can send it out and have it reset by my airbags. Pull the trim panel off the side of our console and we can get to the bolt on the driver's side. We're going to head over to the passenger side and pull the trim panel off of this side. Just a little wiggle and pull. And there's two bolts on this side. Try not to lose them behind the carpet, but no guarantees. Pull the module down so we can get to the plugs. I had to use a pick for these. My fingers don't fit in there. Pop that out of there and ready to put it in a box. All right, let's see if we can package this up so that FedEx can't destroy it this time. Although I'm sure they're going to try. Yep, that's right. A box in a box. Paranoid much? Tape it up and put it in our other box. Wrap up our seatbelt. Not that there's really that many ways they could damage this. But you know they're gonna try. Stuff that in there. Now we'll wrap our other box with some more bubble wrap. Just for good measure. foam to keep it all from rattling around in there. Place your bets. Is it going to make it? Yeah, we'll stick our shipping label on here and good luck FedEx. Do your worst. Let's see if it makes it back in one piece. Well that's as far as we can go today because we're waiting for some parts. I did throw the door back on here and I didn't film it because that's really not normally part of the job. The only reason I put the door on is so I could put it out in the yard while I wait for my parts. And the top of our door now seals pretty nice, so we don't have to put plastic up there. And I didn't even put the wiring harness in, I just put some plastic over that hole there. So it should stay nice and dry in there while we wait for our parts. I do know the hoods, and I think the hood hinges are on back order from Honda. Quite a lays. So I might end up having to get a used one for double the price, but I think I'm just going to wait to see how long it's actually going to take. In the meantime, hopefully I can get everything else and get it together. I can always throw the hood on last. So hopefully next week we'll have some more parts and we can start throwing it all back together. So thanks for watching and I'll see you then.